don't shake it until you bring it back. I know. Yeah. No move and no ginger. Yep. That's me. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, this is uh, an appropriate topic today, talk about the Russian Revolution. Because, uh, Are we fighting with the Russians? Well, not fighting, but Donald Trump has a little bit of issues with the what they're the dealing with. <laughs> yeah, the context in terms of what you're talking about. We're going to be turning yeah. to the Soviet Union. It does seem to be a... a, a, a but um, did you know that um, the Soviet Union was created, like the whole, the big professed idea was everybody gets equal rights and like everybody's just equal. Nobody's like, different. Mm -hmm. Everybody has equal opportunities and equal rights and equal property and stuff. A lot like more more um, like political figures than you'd actually think. I like, really agree with that. And um, an autocracy is where just one person just rules everything. And a lot of people agree with that too. A lot of people try to, or a lot of people try to uh -huh. instill that in their country well, or whatever. Putin, is, is that our, uh, Putin or Putin. Trump? Yeah, no, but Putin. Putin um, is Russian, man. I mean, he probably is. You know, all, um... Everything you said about the Russian Revolution, the autocracy and all of that, that applies directly to Mr. Putin. And Lenin. And, and uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Thank you and welcome to the show today. The, top, the topic today is the Russian Revolution. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about the Russian Revolution, Alana McLaughlin. And of course, Alana, let me welcome you to the show this morning mm -hmm. and to tell you how delighted we are to have you with us. Uh, you've not been with us on a number of occasions, but uh, nevertheless, you are with us today. And you have selected a very, very unusual topic mm -hmm. today dealing with the Russian Revolution. Yeah. Uh, before we get started in the topic, Lilana, let's see if we can have you to give us some information about your background, your education, and some of the things that were important in terms of bringing you to us this morning. And by that time, we should be out of this first six minute segment, and then we'll have an opportunity to uh, dive directly into uh, the Russian Revolution. Let's do it from that perspective. Well, as you previously stated, my name is Alana McLaughlin. I am a freshman at the Nashville School of the Arts. Uh, I play trumpet. And I, what really brought me here was my love for history and talking about topics that a lot of people don't know about. Like the Russian Revolution, people know of it, but people don't really know about, about it. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's my main purpose here today, to shed light on a topic that is kind of important and well, all historical events are important because they tie into our modern daily life in some way, shape, or form. But about me, I'm Alana McLaughlin. I am very involved in sports. I, um, like I said, I play trumpet. I am in marching band. I cheerlead, et, et cetera, just things like that. And that's about it. But school comes before everything. And I'm really more of an academic-based person. So that's really Very good. And so let, let's uh, look at the uh, so-called Russian uh, Revolution, Lana, and uh, give us sort of a, an overview 
in terms of the kind of information that you're going to give us this morning dealing with this very, very important historical event. Well, the overview of the Russian Revolution is really just the big name for two sets of revolutions. And these two revolutions kind of work together to tear down tear down the Tsarist autocracy. And now, if you're not familiar with that, it's a type of democracy or whatever. And it's a type that basically means one person rules everything. So they rule government, they rule the people, just one big leader. If you look back in history, there were lots of forms, well, attempted forms of autocracy. Say Hitler and the Jews, he tried to kind of run everything with him just being the sole leader, not really having a government, just him. Lots of dictators try to instill an autocracy, but a lot of times it doesn't work. But as I was saying, the Russian Revolution is just the big name for that. And see, once the, revolution, the Russian Revolution occurred in 1917, this overthrew that autocracy that I mentioned, and this was the beginning of the Soviet Union, which would come to play in 1922. Why don't you tell us something about uh, how this overthrowing of this autocracy came about? What was an autocracy, and what was the name of the basic kind of thing that upheld uh, the uh, whole uh, Russian situation up, up, up until that time? Well, what upheld the Russian people was the fact that none of them had rebelled up until this revolution, this rebellion. They all sat and kind of tolerated this autocracy, this one person trying to instill beliefs and views that the Russian people didn't necessarily agree with. But they let this pass by until certain people stood up and tried to break down this barrier. And these people can be seen as the equivalent of like civil rights leaders for African Americans. As we know, civil rights leaders tore down the barrier of segregation and things like that. And they helped bring equality for their people as the people who stood up for the Russians did. And there's so, so many people, more than, more than I can name, that stood up and fought this. But in the end, these people stood up, and that's how the part one of the revolution start, started, because like I said, there was two revolutions. They both occurred in 1917, though. And the Russian Revolution is just the big overview of those two revolutions. Okay, and so what we'll do, we'll take our first commercial break in a few, few seconds, Lana, and then we'll have an opportunity to come back and to uh, deal with the second part of uh, the uh, Russian Revolution. And so essentially, you're saying that uh, the revolution started in uh, 1918. 1917. 1917, mm -hmm. almost immediately after what we generally call the uh, First World War. Yes. As a matter of fact, it, it was a product in of a real sense of Russians, uh, particip Russia participation in, in the, the uh, First War. World War. And after that war was over, then we get into that first uh, revolution, revolution. In the Russian Revolution. Coming primarily because of all of the destruction that occurred During during the, the war, war mm -hmm. in Russia itself. And so what we'll do, we'll take our first commercial, and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. why it would never survive somewhere like the mm -hmm. like America mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then after that I'm just going to like comparing dictators and stuff. Okay, well you let me let me know. Are you just gonna start uh, comparing? I'll just follow you. Okay? All right. Okay, but well, I'm just trying to make, get a pace to it and, okay. and, and get a uh, voice level and a depth to it. Okay. You make, make it go mm -hmm. that way and cause it bring you out in reference to it because and so uh, when we come back I'll announce and, uh, wh what we're, we're dealing with and mm -hmm. then uh, you can start again where you please and we've got eight minutes and you deal this with this however you wish to and if at some point you wish to bring in some information in reference to uh, the animal farm etc and et cetera, anything that you want to deal with mm -hmm. dealing with the Russian Revolution because I think we've got a pretty good start mm -hmm. uh, dealing with that great uh, event historical event Thank you and welcome back to the second sec segment of the show for today. 
We're talking to Alana McLaughlin, and she's given us some information in reference to the Russian Revolution, a revolution that occurred almost immediately after the uh, First World War that started in 1914 and came to an end in 1917. And that would be the sort of historical beginning, uh, beginning of uh, what we're talking about now, uh, the destruction of an entire uh, Russian society, yes. and now an attempt to what? Rebuild, rebuild that society. Re rebuild. <laughs> yeah, rebuild that society. Uh, approach it from that perspective. Let's well, for our viewers just tuning in, in the first segment, we did go through my background in education, uh, in education, but more importantly, we kind of talked about what the revolution was. Now, the Russian Revolution is the big name for two sets of revolutions that occurred in 1917, right after the First World War. These revolutions kick-started the overthrowing of the Tsarist autocracy, and I talked about what an autocracy was, which is a one-person-led society. It's just this one big leader that rules government, and et cetera, et cetera. And I talked about, you know, they overthrew this, and also the Russian Revolution was the Kickstarter for the Soviet Union. Now, the Soviet Union is a, a party. It's a Political party, just like you know, Republican or, or coming Democrat. Coming out of the Communist Party. Coming out of the, from mm -hmm. coming from communists. Now, the Soviet Union's big idea was that all persons should have equal rights, equal property. Just everybody should just be equal. There was no personal property. Everything belonged to the state, really. But they tried to make all people equal. Now, you could see that. It might sound, you know, fair and good in the end, but it doesn't really work. Now, something like this couldn't be instilled in America because we have different rankings of people. We have the higher class, we have the lower class, middle class, working class, all that. And to make all these people into one little division... Equal. Yeah. Everybody, everything is equal under that system. Is that what I... Wouldn't necessarily work because while all men are equal, all their possessions and some skills and et cetera are not equal. And so the, the Soviet Union tried to just take away all personal properties. You know, you were just blank, basically. You were nothing but you were, me and you were the same. Even though we're quite different people, in their eyes, we're the same. We're not individual. And something like that isn't really a smart idea to do for a country because people are individuals. And to try to classify them into one small division doesn't really make sense because you cannot classify all people into one thing. Just like if I go into a building and I say everyone in here is middle class, that wouldn't be true because everywhere you go, you'll have lower class, higher class, middle class, things like that. Are you saying that even though uh, there's an attempt to make everybody equal, that all individuals are not, what, the same, the same, and therefore, no matter what kind of system you develop, you have to uh, make arrangements for those differences within America, uh, within uh, individuals. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, and some lesser known political parties tr say that, you know, people are equal, but we're different. And that's true. We're no, no man is worth more than the other, yet we just have different skills. No, we're not the same. Like me and you, we both deserve the same things, deserve the same treatment, but we are not the same. We're not on the same levels. And that's kind of what the Soviet Union wanted to do to all the, all the Russian people. Like the capital city for the Soviet Union was Moscow, and that was also the largest city. And this was all, this was Russia. The bi well, the biggest country in the Soviet Union was Russia. And so I'm kind of focusing in on Russia because of the Russian Revolution. And so, in making all those people the same, it didn't really work out. And so, but here's a surprising fact. Um, after 1917, once the revolution started, once it ended, it was this was 1922 at this point, that's when the Soviet Union really came into par and was classified as an actual party. The Soviet Union did not end until 1991, July of 1991. So this actually lasted and it was incorporated for the Russian people. And so this was, 1991 was about 20-ish years ago. This really went on for a long time and people don't see that. They think of, when they hear Soviet Union, they think of, oh, this is back during Lenin and Tsarist autocracy. 
this was very close to 27. This is 2017. This was that was not a long time ago. And so it's it's very strange to look at it that way because the Soviet Union was still coming into par when we had like modern televisions and stuff like that. It's very strange to think about. You know, Lana, uh, thinking about the uh, Soviet Union and some of the things that you've already said about uh, equality of opportunity mm -hmm. and et cetera, I think that you can look at the uh, Constitution yes. of the United States of America and say in, in reality, these are some of the things that are promised in the uh, United States Constitution. Now, what made Russia different from the United States? Well, see, the United States, the Constitution says, you know, all people are equal and all this and that. It's not really, that's not really how America treats their citizens or the United States. You, you could say that all people are equal and all people get equal chances. That's not really what happens because, and I feel like in the Constitution, things like that were promised so that we could kind of instill it in the country and maybe like over time we'd start to believe it. But that has yet to happen because we still have hate crimes and hate groups and KKK and things like that. And so up until we actually start to instill the things that the Constitution says, like black people have the right to vote, but there are still voting centers and predominantly black cities that get burned down because black people are trying to vote. And so once the United States starts to actually abide by the, I mean, we abide by it, but it, the government does at least. The citizens haven't really clicked yet because, you know, black people have, we have our rights now. Once the Constitution went through, you know, we had people like Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks fight for our rights. We have rights. We can do whatever at this point. But citizens still try to make it hard for us to do whatever. And that's kind of like Russia. You have the right to, but you won't really be able to. A lot of over these last few seconds that we have here, and perhaps we might be able to pick this up by doing the uh, last segment, that when we talk about uh, equality and rights and political rights and et cetera, uh, we're essentially saying that both those things could apply to uh, the United States as well as Russia. Absolutely. But in a real sense, I think that uh, there's a constitution in the United States that promises this, the 13th, 14th, and, and the 15th, 15th Amendment. Amendment. And I think that in a real sense, Russia, uh, the United States has moved closer toward the implementation and the uh, recognition of these rights more so than uh, Russia. Russia or the Soviet Union. And of course, we're going to take our second commercial break, and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. It's habit. Like, do okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't, just, 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 no, because I like, I, I get tongue tied. I like. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to tie your tongue. Do, do like I do with these um, dentures. Dentures. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, you okay. talk about trying to talk with okay. those things. Okay. That's what you know. okay. Okay. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you're doing excellent. You're doing really well. Now, what you want to talk about now? Um, I'm gonna go back in on rights and stuff, okay. and then compare, like, just com comparisons and stuff. Okay, I'm gonna let you just go and start talking about what you think you know about. It. You're doing well. This is some, right. this is some of the information. This is good information, mm -hmm. and it gives us a. But I just wanted to make that comparison because mm -hmm. we believe, all of us believe in equality of man. That's yeah. what, as a matter of fact, the Soviet Union is built upon communism, and communism essentially is the be common. Everybody ought to share everything, property, mm -hmm. and et cetera, and et cetera. And but uh, we. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Alana McLaughlin and she's given us some information in reference to the uh, Russian Revolution. Alana, let's see if we might be able to uh, pick up where we left off during the uh, second segment to give you an opportunity to perhaps look at uh, the Russian Revolution 
the promise of equality as promised in communism, and then perhaps say something in reference to the uh, Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths and et cetera, that kind of thing. Talk, if, talk about it from that perspective. Now, in the last segment, we did talk about, we compared the Soviet Union to how the United States is, and we talked about how the things that they implemented in Russia from 1922 to 1991 couldn't really, wouldn't really work in the United States. And here's another reason for that. Communism, which was very prevalent in Russia and, you know, Moscow, was, um, it was based on the word community, you know, communism community, which is all men are equal, all men should share, things like that. Now, America, we have the 14th, 15th, and 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments that basically talk about African-American rights because there wasn't really a time where Caucasians, their rights were taken away. It was basically black people. And so, in talking about communism and all that, they want all their people to be equal and share. We, we, we couldn't implement, implement that in America because we went through slavery for 300 years. People weren't equal for 300 years, and only after slavery did we start to think about, oh, well, can black people vote? Can black people, you know, have basic human rights? Can we give those back to them? And eventually those were given back to us due to the Constitution. But as I said in the last segment, um, United States citizens are known for not really implementing those Constitution-like rights. Like, for instance, I mentioned how we do, African Americans do have the right to go vote, but you'll still hear plenty stories about predominantly black voting centers getting burned down because of white supremacists don't want pe black people voting. And it makes you think, you know, are we back in the 1800s where black people like couldn't walk outside without issues from white people or just from any other race that felt that they were above African Americans due to the color of our skin? And that's something that can, that really makes you think, you know, what if America tried to implement something like that? Would we have not gone through slavery? Would the Constitution be written like how it is? Would, would women have rights? Because, you know, women got rights even, which is, and that's crazy. Well, it's not crazy that women got rights. It's crazy that women had to be given rights. It's crazy how men think that they're above women just because of maybe stature. They are men. Because they're men. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy how white people or other races think they're above African Americans because they're white. And so that's a lot of things that happen in Russia, if you try to compare them to the United States, it wouldn't really fit, like a puzzle. It wouldn't fit together because it wouldn't work. America wouldn't go for something like that. Mm -hmm. If we got a president and he tried to instill communism and all that, everybody would be like, equal, I'm not equal to this black person, or I'm not equal to this woman or child. You know, it would, it would be lots of issues. Let, let me, uh, let's end this, Lana, over the next six minutes by taking thought of something that I learned uh, quite early in college, and that was the Declaration of Independence. And I think in a real sense, what makes Soviet communism and the United States democracy different is because of what? The Declaration of Independence, which is a promise that is made, that is kept consistently in American history, even during the time when slavery existed. When Thomas Jefferson wrote, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights and they are what? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, whatever has occurred in the United States of America, we have not moved away from the doctrine of what? Universal right or what? The Declaration of Independence. Now, in the Soviet Union, when that was declared in 1917 during the Communist Revolution as this idea of equality, there was nothing that they could base that idea of equality uh, in communism, and especially on this whole concept of uh, the Declaration of Independence. There is no Declaration of Independence to the degree that it, in the Soviet Union as there is in the United States. And I think that in a real sense, that's one of the great differences dealing with the uh, Russian Revolution and the American Revolution. What do you think about that as a statement? 
Well, the Russians, like you said, they didn't have a lot of weight to back up communism. They just kind of said, well, all people are equal. They didn't have anything implemented into government to say that all these people were equal. They didn't have any declarations and stuff like, stuff like the United States, like America has. We had, as you said, the Declaration of Independence, which says, you know, all men are equal, are born equal. Um, we have writings to back this up. We have laws to back this up. We, the government implemented this. And though the government did implement this, the citizens still have yet to implement this. Now, for a good deal, a lot, lot, most hate crimes and stuff, the rate has gone down since, say, segregation in the early 1900s. But the fact that you still hear about hate crimes means that not all American citizens are really keen on equality or keen on that everyone is equal. Because if everyone was equal, we still wouldn't be having hate groups like um, the Ku Klux Klan or white supremacist groups or LGBTQ plus hate groups, things like that. We haven't really begin to understand that people are equal? Yes, it's written down, but do you believe it? Because something could be in writing, but you still won't abide by it. Rules, almost, you know? We have laws that people break every day. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it takes time for you to implement this, but I hope that soon American citizens start to wake up and smell the roses and start to implement these rights because they weren't written for no reason. They were written so that we can implement what these founding fathers wanted, independence and equality and things, like, things of the sort. A final thought in reference to this. I think we can also say that the uh, United States has had a longer period of time in working out its opportunities toward equality with the Declaration of Independence. They had, what, to overcome, what, 300 years, years of, slavery. of slavery. Now, in Russia, there was uh, no slavery as such, but there was what was known as serfdom. And so each nation has had to work the ideas of equality out, uh, from serfdom through the communist revolution, through uh, communism, uh, from what? Uh, slavery to democracy to uh, the Declaration of Independence, all of them coming together mm -hmm. to indicate that while both of these two great countries talk about equality, the United States has a, a, a stronger hold on this idea of equality and equal rights than any other country in the world. Would you, would, would you agree with that? I would agree with that because that's why America has their name, you know, land of the free, because we do have a, lots of things implemented so that people can have their freedom and so that if someone tries to take away that freedom, proper measures can be taken to punish that person. And so America does have the strongest hold on independence and slavery for their people. I think that we are a country that tries to let people get equal rights and stuff, but no country will be perfect. Not everyone will see that everyone is in is equal, but the American government does usually see that everyone is equal and independent, has the right to vote, mm -hmm. the right to bear arms, the right to do what they There's want. a more conscious, a last final statement we might make, there's a more conscious understanding of Americans working toward equality, Than even any though other it, country. it might not be recognized or realized yeah. that there's always this effort to move, what, to move toward equality, much so more than any other country uh, in the world. And, mm -hmm. and I think that with that uh, statement, I can uh, thank you for bringing by that excellent information this morning mm -hmm. and to uh, know that you have really given me encouragement in terms of some of the things that you've said. And uh, we hope to uh, be able to uh, certainly talk about this again, but now we have to uh, call this in for the day. And so let me uh, encourage our audience to tune in again next week to another informative edition of comments. Thank you and good morning.